What up, nerds, and welcome to, <clears throat> um, this is going to be what I call North Carolina Oceans and Beaches, okay? So, uh, first up, if you wanted to do a warm-up, <laughs> just so for your brain, okay, before, you could move on in the, uh, in the video if you want to, but if you want to do a warm-up from the last video, okay, putting these layers in order, starting from the top layer. Can you do it? Can you do it? If you need to refresh yourself, go back to the last video. You should be able to do it from there. Okay, so. All right, so we are going to be talking about North Carolina beach um, environment and the marine environment in general. Okay, so. Um, I think you know what a beach is, but generally it's an accumulation of sediment. Now, most people think of sand, but it's not necessarily sediment, okay? A beach is any kind of buildup of rocks, pebbles, sand, mud, whatever, before a lake or ocean, okay? Because waves are constantly eroding it, so you're going to be getting different types of sediment in those areas. So not every beach is going to be the, you know, white sandy beach that you might think of. All right. So, longshore currents. Okay, these are currents that move parallel to the shoreline. This is moving along the shore. It's a longshore current. Okay. Now, what this does is that this current, you can see with these, this picture with these waves, is that as it kind of goes along, the waves are going to be depositing uh, sand or sediment, and then pulling out, depositing, pulling out, depositing, pulling out. So, the net movement of sand is going to be down the beach. Okay. Now, in North Carolina, we've got a couple um, interesting shoreline features. So, a barrier island is one of the things that we have, and that in this picture, I'm going to move myself over here. In this picture, that is these right here. Okay, these barrier islands on the very edge of North Carolina, these are uh, a these are long, narrow sandbar, sandbars that are parallel to, but they are separated from the mainland. So all this in here is technically ocean water, but all this in here is also technically North Carolina. Okay, so North Carolina is a state that has many barrier islands, spanning a good portion of the eastern side of the state. Now an inlet is this little division between the various islands. You can see on the map there's one here, uh, the little one here, teensy tiny one here, the Oregon Inlet, and this is what they look like in real life. Okay, The sound is the body of water that separates them from the mainland. So all of this, so this whole chunk of, like I said, what is technically ocean water is the sound. Okay, with these islands out here. So an estuary, we actually talked about this very briefly. This is an area where a river or stream enters the ocean and it causes brackish water. So a combination of fresh and salt water. It's not super salty, but it's not fresh. It's kind of in between, it's a mix. So you're gonna be getting estuaries like right in here as the water kind of mixes, okay? So estuaries are really important. They allow many types of shellfish, other marine life to mature in that habitat before moving out to sea. Um, it also allows for certain uh, animals that live both kind of in the freshwater and kind of in the ocean to exist. So things like saltwater crocodiles are going to be kind of back and forth as well. Okay, so there are certain things that people have done um, and certain things that people have built in order to protect um, either beaches or just land from erosion or from weathering. So a groin is a barrier. It's kind of a wall that's built perpendicular to the shore. And what it does is that it traps sand. Okay, so you can see it right here. So if you've got groin, 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 if you've got several of them there, as the longshore current deposits sand, it's going to build up on the groin instead of all being washed away down, down, uh, down the current. Now, on the downdrift side, though, you are going to see more erosion of sand, so you're going to see this kind of, like, divot form. Uh, but that's okay, because overall what you're going to see is that it kind of does this. Okay, now, uh, a jetty is like a groin. It's a groin that's built to protect the entrance to a harbor. So if you've got groin here and a groin right next to it, and you've got an area for ships to come in and out, these are technically called jetties. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Uh, and you can kind of see, it's just a 3D model of what it kind of looks like. 
Okay, so seawalls. I bet a lot of people have seen this before. These are built parallel to the shore. This protects the coast and property from the force of waves. So especially in coastal cities, you're going to see these things a lot of times right next to uh, highways or um, just nearby. They also have, a lot of times, they will have these rocks right here that will break the energy of the waves as they come in towards the shore so that by the time they even get to the seawall, they're not going to be just like blasting up um, on top of them. So this is uh, Galveston, Texas, right before Hurricane Rita. Okay, so you've got your seawall here and you've got your uh, rock buildup to break down the energy of the waves. Um, is this a, nope. I think at one point this was a video, but this is just another way you can see the seawall right here. Okay, so a lot of times, and I think I've talked about this with my earth science classes actually, a lot of times um, there will be uh, organizations or companies that will actually want to maintain their beaches, so beach nourishment happens. This is the addition of large quantities of sand, like a ton of sand uh, onto a beach. Super expensive and kind of dumb, only lasts a few years because the waves will come up and they will erode it back away. So not really great, but if you are a resort that is, you know, making a lot of money for having these beautiful white sandy beaches, well, every few years, you're going to want to replenish the beach so that you're not losing it. Okay. So uh, changes in sea level happen for a number of reasons. So melting glaciers and ice sheets causes sea levels to rise. Rising sea levels can be a problem, okay, because they can cause flooding in coastal areas. Uh, a lot of barrier islands in the Atlantic may be um, sand dunes that were flooded by rising ocean levels early on. So regions that are vulnerable to sea level rise. So anywhere um, this, yeah, it's a little hard to see, but anywhere that you see little bits of red or orange are susceptible to sea level rise. Okay, so around Florida in the U.S., close to close to North Carolina, actually, if you'll see right here. Places in Africa, in India, China. <coughs> okay. Now, the seafloor, this is the deepest place in the ocean. Uh, or rather, excuse me, the seafloor is, you know, the bottom of the ocean. Uh, but the thing is, the ocean is so vast that... There isn't necessarily one bottom. That there's not the. There's always going to be deeper parts. Now the deepest place in the ocean that has been discovered, and we're pretty sure it's the deepest place, is the Mariana Trench. Okay, this is in the Pacific, right near China, Indonesia. The Mariana Trench is right here. Okay, we've only ever sent probes down there. I don't believe any people have ever been all the way to the bottom of the trench. That would be insane. Also, pardon my hair. Uh, the continental margin. Now, we, we did talk about this bef um, before we left in my earth science classes, but there you always see on maps that there will be a chunk of... Um, there will be a, a chunk of a map. So here, going back one. So looking at a map like this, when you look like this right next to China, like all of this is very, very light. And then you get a little bit past, and you get past Japan, and it starts to get much darker. This is showing depth of the ocean floor. And this is due in part to continental margins. So this is the submerged part of a continent. So this is the chunk of land that is still underwater that happens before the continental shelf. The continental shelf then drops off uh, into the continental slope into this deep, deep, deep ocean out here. And the bottom of these places is called the Abyssal Plain, which is, I think, is pretty cool. Okay. So, yeah, continental shelf is the shallowest part of a continental margin, extending from the shore, uh, the shore to the open ocean. Uh, those you don't really need to know. Okay. So, a trench we already talked about, deep depression in the seafloor. Many are near chains of volcanic islands, usually where subduction is happening okay we've talked about this before so as two plates come together if one is denser than the other it will sink underneath it and as it does it will kind of crunch in some of the plate above it and that little area right there okay that is your trench that's how trenches are made 
Now, on Mid-Ocean Ridge, we've talked about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge a little bit. We talked about this during volcanoes and stuff. But this is uh, the Mid-Ocean Ridge, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, is a chain of underwater mountains runs through the ocean basins. The side of volcanoes produce a new ocean crust because what's happening is that this, the magma that's coming up here and the uh, slabs of lithosphere, the lithospheric plates that are shifting to either side, that are kind of diverging from one another, okay? Um, as they push, all right, these underwater mountains form because the magma comes up underneath them, okay? That the site of volcanoes producing new ocean crust. Now, the Rift Valley is the middle part of the mid-ocean ridge, so it's going to be right in here. Um, hydrothermal vents, we've talked about this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> these are holes in the seafloor through which fluid heated by magma erupts. Okay, uh, They're a really important feature because they're the source of warm water deep in the ocean. They support their own, I think this picture got shifted, but they support their own ecosystems. Um, there are there are actually organisms that don't do photosynthesis, but instead do chemosynthesis using uh, the chemicals that are spewing from these vents at the bottom of the hole, bottom of the hole, bottom of the ocean. Okay, so you can actually have entire ecosystems built on these uh, magma vents or these hydrothermal vents um, without having any access to sunlight whatsoever. Okay, uh, we don't need seamount. We don't need that. Okay, so yeah, so if you're going to uh, come up against, <coughs> oh, I'm dying. If you're going to be coming up against a picture like this at any point in time, the way that you're going to be able to recognize these is the continent itself is the chunk, the land that is up out of the water. Okay, there's submarine canyons. The continental slope is where the shelf, okay, actually drops down into the ocean. Okay, sea mounts are underwater mountains. Goyat, we don't need to know. Abyssal plain is um, just the the sea floor at the bottom of the deep ocean. Trenches are near subduction zones. Mid ocean ridge is where the two plates are pulling apart. Volcanic islands are volcanic islands, islands made of underwater volcanoes. Rift Valley is right in the middle of the mid ocean ridge, and then the continental shelf is this part up here the underwater bit of land. Okay, and here you can see it again. Okay, so that's it for me, friends. So keep an eye out, but till next time, keep it real. Gucci.